Star Seaway. Grant decides he's going to go with consistency, and it's taken him all the way into the top four of the SCG Open here in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. So we'll see if uh, he can climb his way to the finals. We'll take a look here. Both players going over their sideboards in the deck list. McGuffey on your left, Lacombe on your right. Red White Devotion versus Blue White Control. Lacombe has just tied it up, so a third and final game in which McGuffey will be on the play. And while these players are kind of looking over sideboards yet again, we'll do the same thing. Blue White Control Mage, that's you, Shaheen. All right. Your Blue White Control Mage and Mr. McGuffey will be on the play this game. So what can he add in against Red White Devotion? All right, so uh, Glare of Heresy is obviously a glaring uh, sideboard card you need to put in. You have Elspeth's Son's Champion. That needs to come in as well. I've always been surprised if the one Elspeth and the main one on the board, especially in a blue-white control deck where you can afford to play more of these blue-white cards. You know, you're not cluttered with black spells. Because Elspeth, there's not really a matchup I hate it against. It's not the greatest against Mono Black Devotion. It's not the greatest against super, super kind of... Uh, we've seen all these Underworld Connection style decks with black green also, but it's good against everything else. You want against the control decks, it's not too bad. It deals with Blood Baron on the other side where you can actually board out your verdicts and be able to kill Blood Baron still. And against these decks, it's just a great way to clog the board up. And minus, you know, uh, being burnt out, you can stabilize, 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 slam Elspeth, and you'll be good to go. Uh, he's going to bring in Last Breath, obviously kills a lot of things. Blind Obedience isn't so bad. I'm actually, we were talking, I was talking with Grant earlier, and I'm not a huge fan of Blind Obedience for a few reasons. One, drawing in multiples is miserable, mm -hmm. especially when you're playing against an aggro deck, and that's what you board in against. Two, there's not a heck of a lot that have haste nowadays. I mean, back in the days of Hellrider, back in the days when everyone was playing Thunderball, Hellkite, and these red uh, mid rangey decks, it was a little bit better, but if you're not playing against Mono Red, you're pretty much not going to see any haste. And if we look at... Um, Jared Lacombe's deck, even though he has red, white devotion, probably should be white, red devotion here. How many haste guys does he have? He has Ash Zealot, and that's probably. He's got it. Ash Zealot, he's got oh, Storm, Storm Red Dragon. Dragon. Okay, so he's got the dragon as well. So this actually is a little bit more red than white that we've seen earlier. So, yeah, so he's got a, a few uh, haste guys. So you're going to see Blind Obedience coming as well. Sideboard here for Lacombe. He's got an Assemble the Legion. He has a Burning Earth, three copies of Chain of the Rocks, four Boros Charm, two Warlord of Helix, two Wear and Tear, a Chandra Power Master, and a Mizium Mortar. So he's playing against a control deck in which he is going to be the aggressor in this matchup, but he can play a little more mid rangey style. So I like Boros Charm in this matchup, of course, to trump his Supreme Verdict and give you a little bit of reach. Also, a big fan of Wear and Tear against a deck that you know has Detention Sphere. Assemble the Legion, also pretty good here. Not the end all be all due to Jace. Um, and then last but certainly not least, just Chandra Pyromaster because that can be a card advantage engine. Those little, little dings can add up, but it can actually let them keep up with cards from the, from the uh, blue-white control deck. Yeah, you're going to see Stormbreath Dragon be an all-star in this matchup. Uh, yeah. He's not playing Doomblade, doesn't have Hero's Downfall. So he's going to be looking at the Stormbreath Dragon with uh, you know a little bit of sadness in his heart there because basically it's Supreme Verdict, Elspeth, or Bust against that card. And luckily for Lacombe, he's got some cards that you can certainly board out. out. Those three Mizium Mortars can certainly hit the bench. His Chain of the Rocks in the main deck also can go bye-bye. Aurelius Fury, a nice one of. I think that can go to the board as well. So he's got plenty of cards to sideboard out. Got some creatures he can probably cut too, depending on how he wants to do his setup here. Um, but I, lo I, I love this red-white devotion deck, and I'm interested to see if it can actually take down blue-white control in a third and final game. Yep, it's definitely a close matchup as we've seen. Uh, I think Aurelius Fury is actually a really sweet card. When it was printed, I was pretty afraid of it. Uh, the ability of Silence attached to it. I've seen people, people have played Silence before in Constructive Magic in form of Orms, Chan, and others in order to get final damage through, back in the day anyway. And Aurelius Fury has a Fireball attached to it, so it's pretty good. Pretty good. It also allows you to tap down on opposing creatures and get through. It's got a lot of modes on it that are pretty exciting. It's not a card I'd want two of, but it's a one of. It can be one of those uh, miracle cards that you can rip off the top later in the game. Yeah, there was a lot of there's a lot of a lot of talk when that card came out and you know he um oh, excuse me, when that card came out, you know, there's a lot of people who are just like, wow, are you serious? Yeah. You can put all this text on an X spell and this is okay. And it turns out the answer so far has been yes. I actually kinda of expected that card to be a little bit more dominant in a format where we were actually seeing an X spell be quite good in Bonfire the Damned. Yeah. Um but that's not the case, at least so far. I would like to see at some point this card get some play in a wreck a little havoc. Yeah, actually, uh, it, even in blue, white, red, I've actually considered running a one copy in the control deck because it gives you opportunity to force through, you know, spells if you want to. Aurelius Fury, you for one. All right. 
Eighth of Link. You know, you, you can silence it. You can kill planeswalkers with it. Yeah, uh, I think I'm gonna add one to my deck when I get home. I like it. Yeah, see, I see. I like doing this one. Whenever I'm on air, I always convince myself to play fringy cards. All right. So I apologize for those who played Wild Ricochet. Um, <laughs> in my blue white red. It's definitely more funny than good. The problem with that card is that against a thought seize deck, like you said, it's one mana versus four. But after they see it, they see it once, like in your early hand, the jig is up. <laughs> They know it's coming, the jig is up, so yeah. it's definitely not the same. There uh, will be no Wild Ricochet. There will be no Wild Ricochet. Yeah. They, they know what's happening here. But uh, pretty sweet against the old uh, Sphinx of Revelation, getting to draw a bunch of cards for four mana. I digress. So this matchup, who's on the play? It'll be McGuffey for game McGuffey's three. on the play. So that's uh, pretty good. Pretty good. He needs to really save his counter magic and his Celestial Flares for Storm Breath Dragon. That is a card that will take him out of this game with you know, extreme prejudice here because you're playing the colors that it is pro of for the most part. Yeah. So, deck is going to be presented and we are going to be underway here shortly. Again, if you guys are just joining us, Cedric Phillips, Shaheen Cerrone, starts the Games Open Series here in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. At SCG Live, hashtag SCG DAL for your tweets. As we are going to navigate our way through the semifinals, we'll make it through the finals as well, crown ourselves a standard open champion, as Shaheen mentioned. Then we'll have Legacy Action beginning in round three all over the course of the day. So, going to be fun to see exactly what does take it down here in Dallas. I know you are a big proponent of Stone Forge Mystic and Friends. Yeah, definitely. That's your, that's your weapon of choice that's next my, weekend my, in D.C.? Yep, that's my shtick. I, uh, you know, it's one of those things where Flores was picking on me not too long ago. He's like, why don't you play a different deck? And then that same tournament was the last top eight of the invitation. And he's mm -hmm. like, fine, fine, play your dumb deck. Yeah. <laughs> play your stone for Play your thing. stupid squire. <laughs> play your squire. <laughs> All right, so we're underway. Uh, actually, Mike Kohler says if he would have, uh, if men would have named Z uh, Garrick and not Xenagos, he would have died to a Xenagos. But the big topic was, do you name the last card in his 70 or his 60 card deck that kills you, or do you name the four of that pretty much kills you? Yeah. And I'm going to go with the four of. Uh, yeah, the Garrick time. doesn't kill you immediately, but it'll kill you over the course of the game, which is yeah. exactly what did happen there. Right. You just cycle to Zorius Charm here from McGuffey. A couple just Temple of Triumphs on the side of Lacombe. So we're going to do a, a, a slow build here. Uh, you know, the, mono red, the red white devotion deck, excuse me, is not the fastest deck in the world. You know, it is capable of some explosive draws with Nykthos, but it's, uh, you know, it's more of a mid range deck than a, than a hyper aggressive mono red deck. Yeah, we've seen this kind of strategy ditch for the Sly deck that we've seen a lot of, or at least the more one-drop oriented red decks. Mm -hmm. And that's because, you know, if you're going to go aggro, they want to kill you right off the bat. But this deck has a has kind of like the mode of winning later in the game as well. And you get to play a sweet card like Boris Reckoner. The Sly deck, I'm surprised, still doesn't run it. At three mana is just too much in the 18 land deck. So yeah. Just too much. Syncopate's going to take care of the Minotaur Wizard, so bye-bye Reckoner, and McGuffey's going to have to pass the turn back stuck on three lands. Does McGuffey have a Dissolve? If he doesn't, I'm a big proponent of main phase drawing a card with a Zorius Charm. Mm -hmm. I love main phasing my stuff when you have to. Fanatic of Mogi, and a he boring old dissolve, So it will meet a Dissolve. Wow. I'm actually okay with letting that resolve, honestly. I just need to hit a land drop. So he's going to cycle Zorius Charm here, which kind of has a similar effect. But the scry on this, when you're stuck on land, is the only reason why I would counter it. You need to hit that fourth land drop when the harder than he does. So, yeah, and the reason I'm okay with like I'm, the reason I'm okay with not dissolving that is like I'm perfectly fine with leaving dissolve up in case something like a uh, like a Chandra comes in. Yeah, you know that you're actually kind of scared of. But fanatic Mogi, like yeah, it deals one and it's a four two. But right. I think you can kind of work your way around that one creature. Right. It, the only reason I would counter it is simply the fact of missing land drops. Because if he let's say he scries at the bomb, then draws and misses the land drop, he's gonna need a main phase of Zori's charm to have a chance at all to win this game. Sure. Being on three land, uh, but Grant does hit his land off the cycle. Problem is he's going to take five here, and this will be dissolved. Yeah, storm breath, and you see Jared's already ready. It would have actually going to get countered. It would actually worked out fine though if he would have dissolved that because he's actually holding a celestial flare. Sure. So uh, it would have been fine too, and he'd be a little bit higher life total. But yeah, it works out just fine because he does hit land. Um, I'm just always afraid because I think if I choke on land, the game is pretty much over. So if an axe is going to come across, going to put McGuffey down to 15. Looks like an untapped Hollow Fountain, so McGuffey's going to go down to 13, and we'll see exactly what he's going to do this turn, just pass it back. Well, he does have Flare. He has uh, Detention Sphere, and he has Sphinx's of Revelation. So I think if he doesn't have another Hasty Creature, we're going to see a Celestial Flare dispatch this Mogus here in order to, you know, salvage some life points. You got to, life total is a resource of control players. It's mm -hmm. something that aggro players don't really have. You know, it's kind of like we have extra cards, you know, because we have this that we can let dwindle and dwindle and dwindle. 
and then eventually deal with the problem at hand as long as you're not at zero. Uh, something that, another advantage to playing uh, the slower decks. So you know, taking a look at his hand here. We don't have a great look at it, but he's certainly got some options at his disposal. And you see that Fanatic Amogi that is in play as a 4-2, and it's going to start by attacking, yes. And he'll be met with a flare with Dissolve open as well. And this has to be a dead giveaway. Oh, he oh. takes it. Looks like he is going to take the damage, so he's going to go down to takes 9. Takes it. And Celestial Flare is one of those cards where you can't really be too picky with it, because once he gets a couple of creatures out, he'll just sack the one that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, now I definitely want a Celestial Flare here. Maybe, oh, he's post-combat? I think he's considering. I, I, I think he's considering it. Yeah, he did it before damage, probably. Yeah, there's no way to. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I think he's realizes the same thing. You can't be picky with your diabolic edicts. Let's be honest here. Yeah, if there's something in play, you got to get it out <laughs> yeah, of play. Exactly. Two but, mana. There's a burning trimissary. Triggers on the stack. You're okay with this, of course. Any follow up to be had? There's oh, not. Wow. wow. I, I like Grant's position here. And Tough Azorius not to. Turn. I think I draw a card main phase here with the Azorius Charm. And pass the turn back? Again, just to hit land drops. Because you have Saints of Revelation. Once you hit a few land drops, you're pretty much, you know, putting the game away. The name of the game, my friend, is playing lands. That's what you got to do. Nick, though, is going to come into play here. Not going to generate any mana just yet. Lacombe going to pay two. Here comes Nash Zealot. It's not that Nick, those can generate a single mana. I think you have to let this resolve so you don't get Stormbirth Dragon out of the game and then Azorius Charm it on top of the library. Maybe the Burning Tree Emissary, rather. You have to let this resolve. Yeah, I don't think this one is I don't think this one is too troublesome right now. No. And I mean if you're willing to let the Mogus resolve and deal you, you know, dealt him five, six damage this game, um, this is obviously an easy resolve. Well, McGuffey's gonna consider his options before he makes a move here. You know what's funny? Happen. You know what's funny in the situation, as we mentioned prior to the match starting, is that Burning Earth is not a huge player in this matchup. Yeah, not at all. Not yeah, at all. Definitely the two color deck advantage. And he takes all the damage for Revelation for two. two. So an overcost of divination. You're gonna get two life though, so yeah. one and two. McGuffey's gonna move up to eleven life. Quick untap for him. We'll see what cards he does draw. Supreme verdict, verdict among them. Uh, and I don't think he can actually verdict here again. I think he's going to have to say go once again. He can play Detention Sphere if he wants, which is not a bad play, too, because, you know, it, it does save you some life as well. Yeah, of course, you just want to make sure that you don't get just get wrecked by, uh, by Storm Breath Dragon. That's right. the one card that you are most scared of right. if you're McGuffey. I think you easily dispatch a Detention Sphere here. You have tons of cards. I think Grant is playing, using his cards a little too conservatively and his life total a little too liberally here because... You know, the red player has one goal, and that's to uh, deal you 20 real quick here. And he's going to say go, so he's going to actually take even more damage here. Well, as you mentioned, using your life total as a resource. Now, he might just be a little bit too conservative, though, as you mentioned. Yeah, it's, it's, well, I mean, time will tell, of course. Um, but using your life total as a resource is much easier when they're not playing mountains as well. Because there's uh, definitely this deck of any deck has the most reach. I and mean, you know, Mogus, a uh, Stormbreath Dragon, there's tons of things that just kill you. Yeah, yeah. Hammer Porphyros also does a nice oh, job. Yeah, that'll do too. it too, yeah. So you've got two creatures coming across here. McGuffey's going to go down to seven, it looks like. And if Jared's baited into playing another creature, which he's not, now this is a point where being burnt out is a real possibility. Mm -hmm. But we don't know really Jared's hand. I haven't been able to get a good glimpse of it. It could just be a bunch of uh, nothing. So we'll find out. So Grant's thinking in the turn. And he has, I think it's another revelation, which is just an easy revelation again. Yep, yep. And he so will. red for three, up to ten. What is this? So he's Quick only tapping of mana. And tapping four. Warlier Seelix. Oh my god, I think he's, he's dead. He's burnt out. Yeah. And this is a example of... Yep, and now Boros Charm, and that is going to do it. And he extends the hand immediately. So yeah. Jared Lacombe is going to win this match two games to one. And you talk about being conservative and not using your cards fast enough, and that's exactly what Grant McGuffey did. He ends the game with a verdict, with a counterspell, with revelation, and all of these things he can use to actually end up winning the game. He ends up getting burnt out, and as you mentioned, just taking too much damage. Yeah, I mean, there's 20 times throughout this match you got to make these decisions 
where I'm playing against mountains. It's not the same as you're playing against a green base deck or you're playing against a white base deck. You will get burnt out if your life goes too low. You know Jerry's got a chock full of burn after board and with the Mogus in the main deck. And even Hammer, like you said, will just burn you out. So you need to use every card in your deck as a gain life spell. You detention sphere, even if you're going to verdict the turn before, you play detention sphere to gain two life. Yep. If you're going to verdict the turn before, use Azorius charm to gain two life. Yep. You got to 